guys, it's Pastor Anna, and this is Magnolia. She's having a little bit of a hard day, so she's hanging out with me. Um, but hey, I wanted to talk to you guys about time. Do you ever feel like you live in the in a world that just, just continues to spin faster and faster around you, and uh, you can't even see the moments that are passing you by because you're just so busy? If you feel that way, you're not alone. There's a lot of time passing us by nowadays and time that we feel that we don't even have. I have two kids, this is one of them, <laughs> a full-time job and a husband with a full-time job as well. Time spent not being busy is not necessarily something that comes without some extra work. Food has to be made, dishes have to be done, diapers changed, toys cleaned up, naps have to be arranged, and sometimes, sometimes putting a kid down for a nap takes a lot longer than, uh, you want it to. And time as a family has its own work too. Fortunately, for many of us, we have been blessed this past year with time at home. And yet, many of us, we still feel as if we're so busy that we simply have no time for free time. The truth is, is if we don't prioritize certain things in our life, there will always be other things that will take the time that we do have. And that includes time spent with God and in prayer. There is something that will call our attention that will need to be done. And if we do not make our time spent with the Lord the most important thing in that moment, we rob ourselves of what matters most and what will richly impact our lives. Prayer has been on the hearts of many. It's becoming a common heart song to the Lord. There have been many, many calls to prayer lately. And why is that? Well, perhaps it's a sign of the times. The uncertainty, the change, a hope for the future, for what is to come, what's been promised. The positivity of the Lord comes from his whispering for a relationship with us. We see that in Habakkuk. We, uh, there is a cry from Habakkuk. Uh, sorry, it's kind of a hard name. Habakkuk. About what seems to be the lack of God's work in the world. He asks fervently for God's intervention in situations that seem impossible. And Habakkuk, I got it, <laughs> Habakkuk said in chapter 2, verse 1, I will take my stand and at my watch post, and I will station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give this complaint. So he's going up to the Lord. He's at this watchtower and he says, okay, look, I got a pickle going on. I need you to answer me. And he says, I'm waiting for your answer. And the Lord in turn did answer him, but we're not told how long he waited for that answer. The, and that, that can be kind of a hard thing for us to do in this day and age because we're all about fast. We're all about speed. We got to go. We get things delivered instantly. I mean, I like my prime membership. Okay. Two day delivery. Yes, please. I like it. We like things fast, but to wait, to wait for it. And we have to wait sometimes for God and to listen longer than one second for his voice. Unfortunately for us, we do live in a world that's busy, filled with noise, gotta go. But fortunately, we have a God that forgives us and knows that we are faulty human beings. We have to remember to not forget to spend God, time with God on a daily basis. For it's the most important thing we do and the most important relationship in our lives. If we want everything else to be meaningful, it starts with that meaningful relationship with the Lord and time spent with him. So let's not let our long to-do list, I'm a list maker, I have my to-do list that I have um, for the week, for the day. So this is, this is for me too. Let's not let our to-do list become our priority first thing. No, instead, let's make time spent with God priority and then have the rest follow. So my challenge to you is to, for my challenge to you is to think about what would it take for me to do what Habakkuk did and take my stand at my watch post? What would it take for me to station myself in my home, in my yard, at my cabin, in my car, and look out and see what he will say to me? And if we don't receive his answer immediately, are we willing to wait to spend our time waiting on the Lord? 
How long will that take? How long will I wait? Because for Habakkuk, we don't know how long he waited at that watchtower. It could have been a moment. It could have been tens of thousand moments. But Habakkuk knew that the Lord would speak. And we know that the Lord will speak. We just simply have to wait, make him our priority, and focus on that. Well, that's what I have for you guys today. So just challenge you, prioritize God, prioritize your time with him, prioritize prayer, and he will speak. And waiting can be part of that. So let me pray for you. Dear God, thank you so much for all of New Hope, for everyone watching this, Lord. Um, God, we thank you that you want to have a relationship with us. You want to communicate with us. Lord, help us to remember to always take time for you, to put you first, Lord. And Lord, let our hearts be ready to wait, to wait on you, to wait on our answer, on your answer, because you are what's important and you are what's good. We love you and we give you all the praise and glory. In your name I pray. Amen. Bye, guys.